Hello everyone and welcome. I can't even, I'm gonna have to sit back a little bit to like fit my hair in. It's the, it's the afternoon and I'm drinking a cup of calm. It's been, yeah, it's chamomile and mint and it's been one of my favorites with a little bit of the honey I was telling you about that my friend had some local honey that she infused with some rose petals. It's just like, it's hitting the spot. And this is my last video I'm recording today. And so I put I put the mane up because she's expressing herself. And this is a fun topic. I've mentioned this a little bit a few times, I believe. And I think it's an important video as I am starting to record my self-mastery program. And I've mentioned so many times, it's like it's a six-week program and then it's this and then it's this. As I go back and edit, I'm like, Sarah, why? Your Aries is showing. You talk about it way too much. But it's literally called self-mastery it's going to be chapters there are six chapters because you know this is for leaders and entrepreneurs this could be a six-day program a six-week a six-month program so i don't want to put it into a box so i'm going over chapters and one important you know maybe compendium to go off of if i'm using the right word i'm not sure to go off of the first and second chapter is like the title of the video states like where and when we can get stuck in our awakening and kind of like where we lose people in the awakening because this is we're going to talk about the ups we're going to talk about the downs and then we're going to come back to neutrality we're going to come back to i am and just being within that space of we know that we live in a polarity based reality we know that we are consciousness running this human avatar we know that we are going through the awakening the ascension and there is a lot of division right now so the way to transmute that division is just to be like it's a penny there's one side of the penny there's the other side of the penny is a penny and so i'm going to highlight some of the positive as well as some of the negatives i have so many crystals in my pocket i'm just gonna i've got the Ruby Kyanite, Aquamarine, and the Shungite, as always. I feel like I always carry Shungite around. I do my best. This is for the rage. The rage. Yeah, there are stones for rage. You can carry Aquamarine. It's like a clear blue, you know. And it's Aquamarine. It's my birth month of March, so. Okie dokie. So let's get started. I'll introduce myself super duper quick. Hi, welcome. My name is Sarah. I am a channel. I channel information. I go directly to source. My intention is to offer the highest and greatest good information, the best and clearest information for the highest and greatest good of all involved and invested. My quest, as it says in you know, the description of my YouTube, is to find and help guide the new leadership team from the awakened new earth. I come from corporate. I have been in leadership my entire adult life, my entire life. Honest to goodness, it was even like when I was a young girl, I'm taking like the, like how to lead the babysitters and stuff like, like it's just, I've been doing this since I you know came to be. But in my professional life, I have been training teams and guiding others for the better part of 11, 12 years now, I want to say. I'm not really sure. And so my you know, purpose, I integrate metaphysical practices into our leadership growth and development, or yes, help set a safe space. I told you I've been recording all day, and this is going public, so I don't care that I'm a little all over the place. I'm here to help guide you back to your most authentic self. And so... The type of people that are drawn to my work, it's limitless. It's absolutely limitless. I'm here for as many people as I can possibly help. If you're here at my table, you're a leader in your own life. You speak from I statements. We like to become the most authentic versions of ourselves and kind of spearhead forward. And so my program that I'm putting together is for leaders and entrepreneurs because we know that business owners, leaders and entrepreneurs are literally the new leaders of the new world because we're being very efficient in our processes. We like to be efficient in our processes. I always did in corporate. I had a very efficient awakening. All these different things. My Waking Up Post Woke series is for you if you're interested in some of my human tale. I know I like to be efficient, but I do long range, so I'm sorry that we're four minutes in. But what is an awakening? What are you talking about, Sarah? If you're here at my table, palabras certas, you understand that there's something afoot. Regardless of your belief systems, you are here and you're like, there's something going on in the outside world, in the third dimensional matrix, something is crumbling. 
whether you've had, you know, beings popping up in your life, you kind of are understanding like the playbook as far as, you know, things that go on in the sports realm. You're seeing a lot of like really messed up things and you're like, why are the Catholics getting so upset? What is happening over here? This it just it seems like there might be some sort of a light and dark battle. Whatever language, whatever you go to, as far as the awakening concerns, there's like light versus dark. Light and dark, good and bad. But then the good guys are bad guys and the bad guys are good guys, but everybody's actually kind of like, and there's there's like people that are running this world and there's this happening, there's this happening, there's this happening. We're gonna get into it. If you can imagine it, it's probably happening. It's probably happening. Dude. <laughs> I was going over chapter one in my, um, and my program is launching on September 2nd. It's the first Monday in September. I'm very excited about that. So stay tuned. I'll have a lot more information for you on that. But I was talking about how, you know, the first thing that I did when I downloaded DuckDuckGo was I, I put into DuckDuckGo glitching celebrities. I was like, oh, buddy, that's where we are. That's where we are. So like I've said before, don't take anything that I say as doctrine. We'll get into the guru versus the guide below. And do your own research. But please also do your own research. Download DuckDuckGo and then put something into Google and put something into DuckDuckGo and see the difference. Never take my word for it. For the love of God, get a pen and paper journal. Make some notes. Let's get into it. I'll use all three of my stones as the pause for you to go get your coffee, tea, herbal, or otherwise. Get some water, get your journal, and we're going to talk about the awakening. We're going to talk about it and when and where we lose people in the awakening. So we'll go positive first. We'll go like the up, the down, and then coming back to center. That's usually what happens. And if you're new here, just so you know, like when I'm talking to you, this is your chair. It's just you and I having coffee at the multidimensional cafe. We're just talking about the awakening, the ascension, this leaders. It's just transcending time and space. So you know more about multidimensionality than you think you do. So if you're new here, when I'm talking to you, my guides show me images over here. And then I usually have like one other universe that's going on over here. So like my minimum baseline is three screens just in my human world. If I take off my big old glasses, it's like, my tears are showing. But it makes me good at what I do. So if I'm staring off into the distance over here, just know that that's where things are going. So basically what had happened, I was, my guides had said it's about like 70% of people have like a positive awakening and then 30% of people have the more negative awakening. And a lot of people they're highlighting is like a lot of people have childhood trauma and they kind of like put a, a, put a kibosh, put a like a turning down of their woo woo, of their spiritual understanding until they get to an adult time, maybe 20s, 30s, 40s, or 50s, and then they go through the up and the down. So it kind of like puts a little thing, like you put a pin in it. I know I'm really like disassociating right now to say like, oh, you put a pin in your childhood trauma in the lens, in the understanding of having a spiritual awakening. This is why my intention at the end of this, what I want you to take away from this is recognize when you're kind of seesawing to one side and try your absolute best to keep your blinders on and stay in neutrality and stay within a very neutral space. I know how difficult it is. I love a good soap opera as well. My human Sarah has preferences. She usually airs a little bit more to the conservative side at this point, but the Waking Up Post Folk series will explain a little bit about that. But we just, we swing, we go back and forth and we, we find our neutrality, but this is a practice. We've never done this before. We've never done this before. Yeah, I just posted a short called Casual Stuff. So go take a look at that. Okay, so let's go to the good. Let's go to the good. I am consciousness having this, running this human avatar and I create this third dimensional matrix with my thoughts, words, actions, and intentions and everything is good and it's good vibes only and everything's beautiful and I just am just... even know what that was literally don't even know what that was something in the cabinet it's a ghost I, I'm, I'm like it's usually ghosts that fall around here so I just want you to be <laughs> things move all the time I had a client session where things are falling off the wall the entire time but like that one was a big one so also 
I'll just set the intention because we're talking about some heavier topics that if you're interested, the link for Sarah's protocol is listed below. It's a free digital download. If you ever get scared, just know that you are bubbled and protected by Sarah's protocol. There's absolutely nothing. I am safe and bubbled and protected and it's completely covered in invisibility. There are absolutely no negative thoughts, words, actions, or intentions or entities that are allowed in this space. Every bit of my content, everything that comes out of my voice box every bit of my voice is of the highest and greatest good of all involved and invested this is the white light of god of source energy that is allowed here so just wanted to just give that little disclaimer for anyone that's afraid of things that could pop in the night but that is for you so i just love it when things like that happen because i'm like you're on the path girl I was watching i'll say this and then i'll get into it i know we're 10 11 minutes in but it's just it's me so you know I was listening to some Lewis Howes and he was like, you know, I ask the School of Greatness. He's like, I ask God on a regular basis to show me a sign, show me I'm on the right path. And I just like thought the thought, I thought the thought of like, yeah, God, I could really use a sign that I'm on the right path. And the car that I've been literally just put up on the wall on my manifestation board my like the it wasn't exactly the style of g-wagon that i that i'm manifesting but it was a g-wagon it was a mercedes g-wagon two of them drove by one and then the other drove by and i was like oh, girl you're on your path you're on your path yeah yeah it's a rusty red g-wagon that's what that's what this girl's gonna be driving one day i'm very excited about that so Good vibes only. We're in the awakening. Our thoughts, words, actions, and intentions create our reality. All the things are beautiful. Everything's lovely. Good vibes only. Is it noon all day long? No, we've got a shadow. There's a darker component to everything. And we are responsible for our thoughts, words, actions, and intentions. We are responsible for our lives. We are responsible for the things that have happened to us, all of it. We cannot live in the good vibes only. What you will start to see within that is as soon as you have an opinion or a thought process or an ideology that goes outside of that good vibes only bubble, you will be shunned and it will not be good vibes only anymore. Truly, that waking up post woke series, it might be for you. It might be for you. That helped me w wake up from the spell that I was under. Is I was like, oh, I'm not, even, I'm not allowed to have any sort of like conservative belief systems. That's not welcome here. No, that was not welcome. And that helped wake me up. It helped like take the matrix square out of the back of my head. So I'm very grateful for that. So the good vibes only, you understand that if you're not looking at your shadow, if you're blaming, you say, y'all are the problem, that's a danger zone. That's where we can lose a lot of people because it's beautiful when it's love and light and everything's calm and wonderful, but you're not really, if you choose to go against the grain or if you have any belief system that goes away from that little group, you're all of a sudden just like scooted out. So that's where we can lose people. There's, what did I write? Good tripping. So tripping, tripping, tripping. They're some of the most powerful realizations that I've ever had on this planet. And like I've said before, my you know content is not for children. I do work with kiddos, but it is when the parents decide that I am the guide for the kiddo and I teach self-mastery for children. Infant telepathy, I teach self-mastery for, you know, kiddos and teens and tweens and things like that. So please reach out directly for a consultation, free 15 minute consultation. But just to preface, we're talking about tripping balls, tripping balls. Some of the most powerful realizations I've ever had in this world, some of the most powerful trauma healings that I've ever had in this world have come from tripping. Scylla. I try to like mince, or not, not mince my words, but not get like shadow banned or banned and things like that. So you know what I'm saying? So I couldn't recommend that more within the safety bucket of why I'm going into it. This is a medicine. 
This is a medicine. As most of you know, I've been without cannabis flower for over two months now. That was a 14 year habit and I'm completely sober. I don't ingest spirits or alcohol of any kind. The only thing that I have is caffeine and it's usually before noon and that's it. No sugar, no gluten on a regular basis, no processed foods on a regular basis. It's cleansed and clear so I can be a clear channel for you to give this information. But those few moments, literally, I would you know, go for my workout. It was the summer of 2021 when I did some like micro and then I was like, I have the tolerance of an Irish dock worker. We're just going to do some, some macro, some heroes. And I did. And so I would go to the gym, I would come home, I would make this big salad, a really big luscious salad, and I would then I would ingest and then I would sit outside and just like watch the air start breathing. And I would connect to Poseidon, the three wise men, you know, some of my guides that I'm, you know, really intricately intricately working with now, I met back in back in that time period. I processed traumas that happened with my grandmother. I processed traumas that happened as a child because I was able to see them. But the most important thing that happened when I first start to get like the, I called it like the Disney film when you start to get the little things. It's like none of your problems matter. That's the first thing. And please do your own research on this. I'm not recommending that you go out and do these things because of what I'm about to say. Like the title of the video states, this is where we lose people. So. If you have an intention to heal something, you have an intention to have a, you know, a trip, to have a spiritual awakening, to have an efficient awakening or an efficient healing, amazing, amazing. But where we lose people in the awakening, I'm gonna go back. The very first time I ever took any hallucinogen of any kind, any kind, the very first image that I got was of my castle in the sky. And it looked kind of like in Mario 64, you know the world where the Venus fly traps are and it's like the, the little castle in the sky. It looked very similar to that. And it was like opening and the music from like the never ending story was playing. And like, it was just like, it was beautiful. The first thing that my guide said was you can come up here anytime you want girl, but you have to go back. You can't live up here. This isn't where you live. This is where you come to heal and process and it's gorgeous, you go back down to earth. So that's where we lose people, is they want a trip every single weekend. They want a trip before they go to work. They want to, you know, trip before they go for a walk, trip before they do this, trip before they do that. And then they just end up on someone's couch in Colorado, in the basement, just there literally like staring off in the distance all the time. It's not a pretty sight, it really isn't. Because that can get a little bit, you can have a little bit of that in the soup and then a flavor of some good vibes only in the soup. And then they can be like, you don't know God because you don't go up here. Where it's like, you don't know God because you aren't taking care of yourself and scrubbing the toilet and cleaning up after yourself and taking care of your whole world. That's a component to this matrix. This is why we came here, is to master this reality and to have these spiritual insights and awakens, but then awakenings and then integrate them into our lives. Which brings me to my next uh, moment in time, or my next thing where we lose people. I didn't realize it was gonna be this long. My apologies, but I, like I said, I like to be fishing my processes, but I do long range. So this is my last human life. And I know that I've recorded an entire video about how you can kind of tell if this is your last human life. I might post those two videos on the same day just to kind of give like a little up or a little down and like kind of blend it together. So we'll see, but I've already recorded it. So the guru mindset, I am the second coming. That's where we lose a lot of people. When you have your trip, when you're tripping and you meet and connect to all these entities, whether it be Mary Magdalene, whether it be, like I said, um, I talked to Poseidon, I talked to the three wise men and all these things, whether you talk to Yeshua, whether you talk to Green Tara, whomever you talk to, it doesn't matter. They're all existing. They're all available for you. And the ones that are meant to experience, you're meant to experience will come to you. And depending on how you channel, 
Like I speak through. So I was connecting to my aunt that passed away the other day. She came and gave me a message for my mother. And so I speak it. So I sp like let my guides speak through me. So I'm speaking and then I'm my aunt speaking and then I'm speaking and then I'm my aunt speaking. So there have been times that I've been channeling that I say the words through my human body. I am this. I am, you know, this angel. I am this. But I'm not. But I'm not. They're just speaking through my my vessel, my human avatar as the channel, and they're just talking. So without ego integration, without shadow work, which is like I had said before, you can start to say in that one experience, I'm Yeshua. Yeah, I'm the second coming of Yeshua. I have to start doing things. In my personal practice and opinion in life, there are no living gurus on this planet. When you ascend, become an ascended master. You can do whatever you want when you're up there. That's fine, but you have to leave the planet to do it. I don't believe in living gurus. If you go to the bathroom in the same way that we all do, age of Aquarius, so many different lenses that we can view this through, there are no living gurus. There are people that channel information. There are people that are healers. There are people that do all different works on this planet. But there are no, Yeshua ain't coming back. He lives in you. It's Christ consciousness is in you. I think I did a whole video last year why Jesus ain't coming back. So understanding that, having a grounding practice is one of the only non-negotiables that if you listen to nothing else that I say to you, having a grounding practice and recognizing that I am God having a human experience, I'm a fractal of God, I'm a drop of the ocean and the ocean itself, I'm just a person, I have access to infinite knowledge, the Akashic records, whatever you want to call it, I'm just, I'm just me. I'm just me. As a channel, and for healers and for guides in this capacity, the parable that I really love to use is, you know, when you have an electrical cord that's plugged into a lamp. Oh my God, you channel, you turn the light on, everything's beautiful and great. But when it's not plugged in, it's, it's pretty much a rope. It's pretty much a rope, pretty, pretty useless. And I loved that analogy. It made so much sense to me. And it's helpful for me whenever I get big downloads, whenever I get big images or big, or you know, someone messages me and says, wow, Sarah, you really, like your channels really came through. Like I'm connecting. It's not me. I'm just a person. Marcus Aurelius, I'm just a man, just a, just a woman. I'm a woman, definitely so. Okie dokie, so the guru, good vibes. Druggy drugs. Okay. So this one's kind of in the middle. I don't know which way I want to go. So the good vibes only. That I kind of go this way to the, the trauma, the big T, little T. Once you start to look at, you know, like I'd said at the beginning where my guides were like, it's like 70% good and then 30% bad at the beginning, but some people have like little baby traumas or big traumas that happened when they were kiddos. Like, just like I'll like give the, you know, parable where I was tripping and I saw the image of my grandmother pulling me down the hallway by my hair. It had been like joked about, but I had never really seen it. But you know, the plant medicine like just shrunk down the trauma small enough into my brain where I could just book and give it away and just really process it without any attachments, without any egoic attachments. So the trauma is where a lot of people can get stuck. Oh, no, no, I'm this way because this happened to me. I've labeled it on my lapel and this is my story and I, I'm this, is, yeah. No, this happens to me. This happens to me. Yeah, I could have done that. It was sexualized when I was a child. I had so many ridiculous things happen to me across all time and space, across all time and space. I could sit here and just be miserable and bitter and say, yeah, that's happened to me. I don't have to evolve. I don't have to evolve, no. Mm -mm. I don't even know how many people did it. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. So a lot of people get stuck there in the story. 
not so much in the moment where it actually happened because you know that's our nervous system you know your body doesn't know the difference whether you're talking about something in the past the present or your future your body doesn't know the difference this is dr joseph dispenza language where when you completely revisit it over and over and over like why this is the end of therapy i have a whole video on that i'll put the link for that below When you talk about the trauma, big T, little t, over and over and over again, your nervous system is reminded of that trauma over and over and over again. It's the same thing, it's an addiction, it's like an alcoholic drinking over and over and over and over again, and then the moment where they actually become sober and they look in the mirror and they're like, oh my God, I'm 50? I've been telling the same story from high school for this entire time, how did, your body doesn't know the difference. So we can get lost in the trauma. We can get lost in the story and we can get stuck there. We can get stuck in telling it because we like the way that it makes us feel when people feel bad for us. Show of hands, have you been there or do you know someone within your reality? Like this video or comment below and be like, yes, I agree with that, Sarah. I know someone within my reality. I know someone who's done that. I've been there. I've been there. The borderline homeless story I tell so, I used to tell so many times, so many times. And now it just makes me better at my job. And I'm, I'm not in any way upset that it happened because it gives me gratitude for what I have every single day. Gratitude is the key to your abundance. Okay. Okay. The next one is, it's a toughie for me too, which is the processing and then the astrology as well. So I have a whole video on getting lost in the process, which is kind of like, go, it's like go play outside. And I talk about the processing and the astrology that can, that this can kind of be lumped together. So you're, you know, unpacking childhood traumas, you're stepping into your awakening and you're understanding that, you know, we're kind of like mostly water, we're kind of run by the sun and the moon and we start to, you know, do some astrology work. And we, were, we understand that things were built into our charts. Oh my God. That's another version of labeling our trauma on our lapel. It's like... I don't have to evolve. No, my Chiron is in Gemini in my eighth house. So I was like born to be borderline homeless. I was born to have father issues. I was born to have this. I was born to have that. Okay, then change it. Then do something about it. What was your role in it? When were you acting like an inner teenager? When were you self-sabotaging for negative attention, positive attention, whatever type of attention? How can you evolve? How can you better yourself? How can you do things differently this time? How can you not go underneath the trauma and then underneath the trauma and then underneath the trauma because you can keep going you can keep going all into the rabbit hole of every single trauma you can go into oh the person that abused me was wearing this color shirt and so i hate that color shirt so now i just like lit you know what i mean you can go into all of that you can go into the astrology oh but you know my mars and venus are in square to each other so i knew that i'd be older Without my, I'm still single and you know, my Mars is this and my Venus is this. So I'm still this. I'm still, fall in love with yourself, girl. You write out the list of all the things that you want for your partner and you become a vibrational match for those things. That's it. That's it. This isn't easy. This isn't something that is good vibes only. It's saying, like, oh wait, I'm the only one responsible for my life. I'm actually an adult and this is my responsibility. And I created this with my thoughts, words, actions, and intentions. And I'm here to master my reality and save myself. I'm the only person to save me brings me to the white hats <laughs> brings me to the light hats okay all of the things and then we, we're kind of i'm not even going to entertain if you know you know if you're here with me and you're watching this video you know there's probably hypothetically a whole group of really negative beings really really dark entities or you know shapeshifters that run this run the planet you know there's probably some mind control going on and there's probably some you know sexualization of, of children and and there's probably a, a playbook for pretty much everything and everything's scripted and decided ahead of time and yeah it's pretty it's pretty gross it's pretty gross so anything you can imagine it's probably real 
Probably happened. Like the Luminuti stuff. I don't even like saying the name on here just because it's like, I don't, I want to reach as many people as possible. And if you know that, you know, I don't even like to give it as much. It's not like it's the Illuminati. It's not so much like the, you can't say his name or he's back. There's no fear there, but it's just, I want to reach as many people as I possibly can. And I find that certain videos, if I start to talk about it, it doesn't get to as many people. So I would like to give this as a where we could lose people type of a moment. So I wanted to highlight that. So a place where I've seen a lot of people get lost, and this was more in between 2021 and 2023 or four. Yeah. Is getting lost in the intel and get lost in the intel and the white hats are coming. I'm sure there are. I'm sure there are. But if it is not in my current reality, if it's not sitting in front of me and I have absolutely no control over it, then it is not in my reality. Then I'm choosing to pick up the phone and to find that thing and go into that. I was talking to somebody today about this where they're like, nope, they just, they get lost in the, I don't remember if it was CNN or Fox News. It was one of the big, didn't matter what side it was. They just just listen to every single thing and every single thing that anyone that they say, it's not opinion, it's just fact and they're just, and they believe it. And that's that. And you can see that. I live in the United States in the last day of July, 2024. You can see that. This is fact. This is fact. That's opinion. This is fact, this is fact, it's opinion. Or the, the white hats are coming and they're breaking in and they're doing this and all's better and that it's all gonna be revealed and everybody's gonna see it. Yes, things will be revealed. We're in the karmic eight year. Yes, we know that. And it's happening in its due course. But again, if you know that it's like, how do I say? People that were journalists or that, you know, were on mainstream, whatever side, when they leave that, they're free and they talk about it. It doesn't matter what, if it was like a left wing or a right wing, when they come out of that, they talk to each other. They're like, oh my God, you went through the same thing I did. You went through the same thing I did. And when you try to get to the truth, that's when you get like, you're talking to the truth. No, absolutely. You can get out of here. Good vibes only. And you're looking at your shadow. Absolutely. Get out of here. Get out of here. No, we don't want to talk about the truth. We don't want to look at our own role in this. No, no, absolutely not. No, thank you. So we're getting lost in the intel, lost in the white hats, lost in the, you know, and this is where, you know, a lot of people, there is a sole role of being a light warrior and actually being, you know, someone that fights for lack of a better term out in the external. That is, a, that is a soul contract to do, and it's a very positive one. So it's like, this is where it's kind of, you're splitting hairs, where, where's the line? You know, there was someone that got lost in the awakening that he got lost in the intel. He would just watch podcast after podcast after podcast every single day, hours, hours. Wasn't working, wasn't doing anything, was sending emails to say like, Oh, this, you know, at at 30 minutes in, this is happening. And 25 minutes in, at two and a half hours in, watch it on 1.5 speed. And it's like, you start to get this, I'm right and you're wrong. Where we know that we cannot have, and I told you so dance. We can't be like, ha ha, you were wrong. You're not going to get to the awakening. That's you separate from another. That's saying you're better than the other. Where you're no better than me. I'm no better than you. We're human beings. We're the same. We must welcome everyone once they have their awaken, awakening. Welcome them. Have some standards. Really. Like honesty is a standard of mine. Kindness is a standard of mine. And speaking from I statements. You can share your reality, but don't try to convince me that that's my reality. I'm allowed my own reality and you're allowed your own reality. Do you know what I mean? Oh, for the light warrior, I gave a little like a way to kind of say like, am I being a light warrior or am I getting lost in the intel? It's kind of like when you learn, you know, um, Taekwondo or mixed martial art, MMA or like, not MMA, maybe MMA or what's the Taiwan? 
Muay Thai. Like when you learn these types of skills, it's to defend yourself. It's, I don't use them unless I need to. Or if it's like you're coming out guns a blazing and you know, you know, swinging all your rifles and stuff like that. It's like I wrote Ninja versus a child, where it's like you can kind of tell if you have the emotional intelligence or if you don't have the emotional intelligence. Are you being judgmental and saying like you're not welcome here because you believe this? Yeah, yeah. Because if you would, I'm asking my guides because this is a great way or my phone's going low power now. A great way to really ask yourself, where am I at? You know, there was the poom poom attack on the, the uh, Mr. President, Mr. Trump. Like that was, they tried to, to him. And so a great way to ask yourself where you are, were you excited that that was about to happen? Because if you were okay with that, that's a you problem. That's a you problem. That's a mental health issue. If you're like, no, I would totally be okay if someone that deferred my belief system would, would be off. Yeah, I'm fine with that. That's not okay. That's not okay. You must wish for your enemies, everyone on this planet, everyone on this planet to have love and magic and wonder and abundance and health and happiness and family and good food and beverage, clean water and a roof over their heads. Because every soul in a human body is worthy of that at least here at this table. Is there anything else? This is why grounding is key, where we lose people processing trauma, white hats, intel drugs, bad aluminum, light worker, good, good vizoli, good tripping. I'll put those two videos, processing, the end of therapy, and I'll find the why Yeshua is not coming back video and I'll put those links below. A great way to navigate this is just to say, if someone's, how do I say? Stay the course and keep your blinders on. Yeah, there's dump, dumpster fires everywhere. There's division everywhere. There's things, and I've mentioned this before. So keep, pick one, pick one. Pick one really awful negative thing that you want to pray for and focus and send that group of people your prayers. For me, it's the children. I send them my prayers. I send them my light all the time, all the time. And so that doesn't get me caught up in, I can't be responsible for everybody. We're not supposed to be. God is responsible for everybody. And if everyone on the planet worried about their home, their family, their team, their flock themselves first, it would be a much better place. So it has to start with us. So finding gratitude for what we do have, expressing that gratitude on a regular daily basis, and then sending love as our cup runneth over after grounding ourselves to that specific soul group. It could be advantageous. It could be something to be helpful. Stay the course. Keep your blinders on. And since this video is going to be, you know, hopefully something that the people in my self-mastery program watch as well as for my community on YouTube, I've been talking about this for a while and on my Substack as well. You could have been complaining with someone yesterday about, oh, you know, we're, we love the same conservative pages or, oh, no, we love the same liberal pages and, oh, no, we love this. And then today you're choosing neutrality. You could say as they're talking to you, thank you so much for sharing. That's not my reality. I know a few days ago maybe we talked about this, but I'm choosing to stay in neutrality now. That's not my reality. That's not my reality anymore. You get to decide what your reality is. You get to decide. Thank you so much for sharing, express gratitude. Thank you for sharing your reality. That is not my reality. That's not your stage to share and to maybe they'll ask you, well, what is your reality? I'm just focused on peace. I'd love to go for a walk with you. What in our reality would you change if you could change it? What can you change? What do you have? You know, we're leaders around here. So we want to be efficient in our processes. That's why we're, you know, using all of these tools but we also are taking action steps to work with the laws of the universe to say, okay, I want this huge big goal. Or is it the law of divine action or applied action or aligned action, whatever it may be. I'm taking action steps. So what can you do in your reality today to create the future image that you want? What are some little steps? 
What role are you playing in the awakening? How are you a leader in your world? What is it that your you know, family, your team, your flock, what do they look to you for, for guidance? How are you most helpful to your community? I did not think that this was gonna be 40 minutes, but I love that it was. Thank you so much for being here with me. What questions do you have for me? Um, how is this making you feel? How can I best support you? What's going on in your world? I'm just so grateful that you're here. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you soon. Is that it? I think that's it. Ciao.